Hi everyone, I'm Miss Haley and today's Library Learning Lab is all about the American Pioneers. You'll learn about who they were, what they ate, and what a day in their life looked like. So who were the Pioneers? Pioneers were people who moved west across the United States in the 1800s to settle the land and to start new lives. It was a long journey filled with lots of walking. You're probably wondering how the pioneers got themselves and all of their stuff to the west. Well, they had covered wagons known as prairie schooners. These wagons were 12 feet long and 6 feet wide. They're taking everything that they're going to need to survive the trail. So, things that you might find in the wagon would be guns for when they're hunting or even to defend themselves, food to last, Dutch ovens for water, and chopping tools and so much more. They had to save a lot of the room in the wagons for all of their essential things, so most people walked alongside their wagons. Once you finally found a spot to settle, you still had to build your own house from scratch. Pioneer homes were usually simple cabins built with the natural materials these settlers could find on their new land. An ideal house would be a log cabin built with logs that had notches cut into the ends so that they could stack evenly to create the frame of a house. These log cabins would then be sealed up with mud or clay to fill in the gaps, would have holes cut to make windows in the sides to let in light, and would have a stone fireplace built to provide warmth. If no trees were available to provide lumber, pioneers would often resort to creating sod houses made out of prairie grass and mud. These temporary structures required a lot of maintenance and upkeep, but they could be useful for a short amount of time while the supplies were gathered to build a more permanent structure. Log cabins usually only had one or two rooms and an entire family would live in one small space together. In 1862, a land act was passed by Congress and signed by Abraham Lincoln. This act is known as the Homestead Act. The Homestead Act helped settlers move to the West. It let government-owned lands go to farmers. If anyone was a citizen or becoming a citizen, they could get up to 160 acres of land. How do you wash your clothes at home? Do you have a washing machine maybe? and detergent that you pour in and you turn it on and just let it go? Well, if you were an American pioneer, there was no washing machine and there's no detergent. You had a wash bucket, like this one. You had a washboard, like this one. And you would have lye soap. You would take your bucket and fill it up with water, put your washboard in there, and take whatever you were gonna wash, which is usually your other dress that you had or pants, and you're gonna dip it in the water Get it all wet. You're gonna take your lye soap and scrub, 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 scrub where all the stains are. Then you gotta use your muscles and you would rub it against the washboard to get all the dirt and grime off. When you were done with that, you would wring out all the water. And you would hang it up to dry. Now, pioneers usually only had one or two sets of clothes. A pioneer woman would wear a long dress. She would usually wear an apron to protect her dress from um, sparks from the fire. And then she would wear a bonnet, like this one, that would protect her hair and her neck and face from the sun. Pioneer men wore layers of clothing made from sturdy materials like linen, wool, fur, and 
canvas. Zippers were rare during this time, so most clothes used buttons. In place of belts, pioneer men wore suspenders. It was also common to wear hats to cover the head and protect during hard work. Pioneers made their own clothing. Pioneer girls would learn to spin flax and wool into thread. This would then be used for loom weaving to create fabric. This was a very time-consuming process, so most pioneers only owned a few items of clothing. It was very important to learn how to mend these clothes because hard work often resulted in holes and tears. What kind of chores do you do at your house? Well, if you were a pioneer child, in the 1800s you would often help around the farm. Some common chores would be getting water from the stream, working with the livestock in the garden, or helping out in the kitchen. And today, I'm going to show you how to make butter at home. You're going to need a few things. A mason jar, a marble, heavy cream. You can get it from a store, but if you were a pioneer child, you would often get it from the scrapings of the top of milk from a cow or a goat, cheesecloth or a paper towel, and water. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your mason jar and your heavy cream, And whatever size mason jar that you decide to go with, you want to fill it halfway with the cream. You're then going to take your nice clean marble and drop it inside. And close the mason jar super tight. And now you're going to shake. You can see that the fat solids have separated and the liquid left behind is called buttermilk. Using the cheesecloth or a paper towel, you'll want to drain the buttermilk from your butter. Rinse your butter a few times with some clean cold water to remove any of those last little bits of the buttermilk. If you would like, you can add a little bit of salt to your butter at this point. Using a spoon, press on the butter to remove even more of the buttermilk. You can use your butter right away or store it in the fridge for later. Homemade butter goes great on warm cornbread. All right, if you were an American pioneer in the 1800s, you might have eaten porridge, dried meats, vegetables from the garden, and cornbread. We're going to show you how to make cornbread right here. start by taking two tablespoons of oil and putting it in our cast iron pan. Do one, two. If you were a pioneer that would have gone in your wood stove or you can put it in a preheated oven at 400 degrees. So that way the oil gets all hot. Now we're going to put our dry ingredients in a bowl. And our dry ingredients include two cups of cornmeal. This is ground up corn. This is white cornmeal. Cornmeal comes in white and yellow. Just one.
and two. Our other dry ingredients include one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, and then we're going to mix that up with our wooden spoon here. All right, that is all of our dry ingredients. In another bowl, we are going to mix our wet ingredients. And our wet ingredients are, remember earlier we made butter and we had leftover buttermilk. You can buy some buttermilk from the store and that's what we're gonna use here. We have a cup and a half of buttermilk. All right. Into those wet ingredients, we are also going to add two more tablespoons of oil. Just one and two. And then we will need two eggs. One. And two. All right, this is what an apron's for. Then we are gonna mix that up to mix all of our eggs and oil and buttermilk together. When it's all mixed together really well, it should be yellow, a light yellow in color. So that way all of our yolks are mixed in. All right. There we go, just like that. Now we're gonna mix our wet ingredients into our dry ingredients. And now here's the trick when you're making um, cornbread, is not to over mix it. You wanna mix it just enough that all the wet and dry are mixed together, but that you don't keep going. So we're gonna mix our wet ingredients into our dry. We're gonna mix those together. Just until we don't see any bits of the dry flour. Should look like that. Now, if you were making this, your pan would be very hot, so you make sure and have parents help you with anything that has to do with the oven or heat. But this would be really hot, ours is nice and cool, and you would then pour your mixture into this pan and you would put it in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes, or if you're a pioneer person, again, it would cook on a wood stove. <laughs> had a lot of work to keep themselves busy, but they still needed ways to have fun. One fun activity for Pioneer Girls was a game called Game of Graces. This activity used a wooden hoop and two sticks per participant. The rules were simple. You'd carry the wooden hoop on the crossed sticks and would send it flying into the air by pulling the sticks apart. The other participant would try to catch the hoop on one or both of their sticks. The game was intended to teach pioneer girls elegance and grace in their movements.
Take a moment to think about what your favorite things are to play with. What kinds of toys do you have? Maybe you have a favorite Hot Wheels toy, or maybe you have a tablet that you like to play with, or maybe you have a whole assortment of stuffed animals that you can't decide which ones you want to sleep with every night. Well, in pioneer times, children would have only had one or two toys, and they would have been very, very important and special to them. Some pioneer toys included carved figures, like horses or different animals. Sometimes they had sets of jacks that they could play, or dolls made out of things like corn husks, or rags, or yarn. Today we're going to talk about a way to make your very own yarn doll. So the things you need to create a yarn doll are as follows. Yarn, scissors, and something that is rectangular. We're going to be using a piece of cardboard, but you could also use things like a book. The first step is taking your rectangular piece and your yarn, and you're just going to begin wrapping. So you can start by holding your yarn at one end of your rectangle and wrapping around and around and around. We're going to wrap this about 20 times. You can use your scissors to cut the end. We're going to cut a small piece of yarn. Very carefully slide your wrapping off of your rectangular piece. Start by slipping this yarn in the middle of your wrap. And then tie it into a knot. Now you're going to take another piece of yarn and tie it around the whole wrap. This makes the head. You need your cardboard piece or your book again, and you're going to wrap the other direction. So this time we're going to go around the short edge. Do that about 10 times. You cut and carefully slide it off. Going to repeat the same process of tying towards the end, but we'll do that on both sides. So you'll end up with something like this. These are going to be the arms. So you have a doll with a head, and you have some arms. This piece will still be able to split right down the middle to make a big hole there. Just slide your arms right through, and we're going to tie right underneath them. This will hold the arms in place and create the body. Our next step is going to be cutting these little loops at the end of our arms to make hands. Thing at the bottom of the doll, cutting all of the loops from where you first wrapped it. From here, you have two different options. If you want to give your doll legs, you can split this and tie down on either end to create the feet, just like we did for the arms. That'll end up with a doll that looks like this. The other option is to leave it long like this, like a dress. So you'll just take two more small pieces, tie down near the ends of the yarn.
Now the final step with your doll is to go through and trim all of the extra little pieces off of the yarn. They kind of look like little pom-poms. yarn doll. Now if you choose to make these with something other than a piece of cardboard, it's just going to change the size of your doll. So if I made it with a book, I would do the same process, just wrapping around the long ways or around the short side for the arms. You can create dolls of all different sizes. You can create dolls that look a little different. You can do all sorts of hairstyles on them by adding yarn. You can make different colors, different shapes, and all sorts of different styles of yarn dolls. Thank you for joining us for another Library Learning Lab. We hope you learned something about the American Pioneers. Find more virtual content on our social media and YouTube pages, at Preble Library.